Alright, and welcome back to another video. Uh, today we'll be going over the beginnings of Botania, which is pretty much my all-time favorite mod. So I'm excited to be able to show you guys what I've learned, what I've, um, the beauties of it, um, and hopefully take away some of the stigma that some people have that it's, diff that it's so difficult. Uh, it's not too bad once you learn it, just like any of them, uh, like me personally. I find applied energistics too hard, but I'm getting the gist of it. All right, so to get started in Botania, you'll need some kind of mystical flower. You'll eventually want all of them because you'll need different colors for different recipes. But you'll need some kind of mystical color. You'll find them around the world. They have this little sparkle effect if you can see that, um, and they come in all sorts of different colors. That is not a mystical flower. Um, you pretty much just walk around, go around to your world, see if you can find them. Uh, find what you can. Like, here's another one. There's an orange one. Alright, so then, once you have those, you'll also need the book. It'll help guide you through some of the basics. It's not necessarily a tutorial, but it does give you ideas and hints, kind of, how to progress by unlocking different chapters. So to do that, you'll just need a book <coughs> and a sapling. I have an oak sapling here. It can be any sapling of any kind. And then it will give you the book. So you'll take the book. And you'll tuck through it. And you're gonna it's going to start out with mana, mana manipulation. Talk about different items here. <coughs> so next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to need an apothecary. This is pretty much your second most important item in the mod. Uh, this is how you're going to make all your flowers. So you're going to need six cobblestone and a petal of any kind. And to get a petal, all you have to do is take a flower. I don't have one on me, so give me one second. Just a flower of any kind. And throw it in a, in a crafting table. Or your crafting grid. I'll do this for now because with Creative On, I don't have a crafting grid. But you just throw it in there and you'll get petals. You'll get two petals per flower. So then that's how you get your petals. Also, interesting side note if you want any of these petals, if you want to go one more step further, you can get the dye from those petals as well. So it's an easy way to get dye. But that's just a side note. Alright, so then you're going to need to put water in your apothecaries. Some mods uh, allow you to pour um, water automatically in. Um, the mod pack that I'm on right now, all the mod 7, does not allow for that with the mods. They don't connect. So you have to fill it manually with a bucket. But I just recommend making an infinite water source nearby your apothecary and that way you can just grab and go as you, as you need to. You grab these seeds, we'll need these. Alright, so then your first important flower is you're going to need a pure daisy. And you're going to need this because it's the way, only way to get living stone and living wood. So, and that's important because those are two of your main building blocks for much of the rest of the mod, other than the flowers. Um, so then you're going to just need in your apothecary, and I kind of made up this system here, but... I have the apothecary in the center. You're going to need to put four white petals. And now, this time, it actually does matter what color they are. They have to be white. And you just throw them in the apothecary here. You'll see it shows you a little pattern. If you look inside, you can see them floating around. It's kind of cool. And then you need to throw seeds. And they have to be wheat seeds. So then you'll just take a wheat seed and you'll throw it in there. And it'll make a little noise. And then you have your daisy. Or any flower, whatever the recipe is, as long as you have the recipe right, when you throw the seeds in, it will give you the flower. So we'll just place this down here. Now, how this works, go on. Uh, how this works is then you'll take wood or stone. It has to be logs of any kind. It works with most mod, but I haven't seen a problem, but vanilla for sure. 
and stone, just regular stone, not cobblestone, but regular stone, and you'll place it in the blocks directly around it in a circle. And you'll start seeing these little particle effects. Now it only affects the blocks right next to it like this. So if you want to make more, like with this one, if I put it closer or if I wanted to put more around it in a different way, you can. Uh, in a later episode, I may show how to automate this with applied energistics or refined storage. Uh, there may be other ways as well, but those are the easiest ways I've found. Um, basically, you just let these go until they change. It takes a few, like a minute or so. I'm not sure exactly the time frame, but it doesn't take super long. And then when they convert, they will convert to living wood for the logs or living stone for the stone. And then you can collect it, place more down, and repeat the process. All right, so then once you have some of that, you'll take your living wood. You're going to put two in a crafting grid. You're going to need to make some living wood twigs because you need to make a wand. Wand is the is a very important part of the mod. It's how you uh, make the flowers and other parts of the mod work together. Um, and it, you can also see some useful information with the wand as well. So just two living wood logs and you'll get a living wood twig. Then you'll take those twigs, you need three of them, and back to being any petal. You'll take two of any petal. They only have to be the same color. Uh, you can just put any of them in here in any combination. As long as you have the three twigs, you can put any combination of two petals in here. And it will customize your um, wand. Right now I have this one because that's just a generic one in creative that shows up. But this would show as two brown flowers there instead of white if it was the actual recipe, as you'll see here. And if you had a mixed colors, it would show up as different colors as well. So that's cool. You can customize how your wands look. <coughs> then after you have your wand and you're good, just keep hold of it somewhere. You'll need it as you go. Now the next most important thing you got to do is you got to be able to make mana. To make mana, you need a generating flower of some sort. The only way to start into this is you need to make an endo flame. It's pretty much your only way to start into the getting mana. It's not very efficient. It's not very nice um, of a process to use, but it's simple, cheap, and a good way to get into getting mana. So again, you'll need seeds for afterwards. But you'll need a red, and this is back to needing the exact recipe. You'll need a red petal, a light gray petal, and two brown petals. You'll throw those in your apothecary, throw the seeds in, and then you'd get the end of flame, which I have one set up over here. Ignore this stuff for a moment. I'll get back. To, I'll get to it. So for the end of flame, it eats coal. So I just have some coal here. You can eat coal or coal blocks. Uh, you get more burn time from a coal block. Um, you would just, and then so to feed it, you'll just throw some coal on it. You'll see it in a moment. It should start showing on fire. It's working, right? Let me see. Maybe we have to use the wand here. All right. So it may not be working because it may not be connected up. So to connect up with your wand. You'll see if you um, crouch and look off in the distance of nothing, you can right click and it will change between bind mode and function mode. Function mode just shows you um, what's going on. It shows you the amount of mana in something. Uh, it shows you the direction of mana spreaders pointing. Uh, really doesn't do much otherwise. For bind mode, which is what you're going to be using for most of the time, when you look at a botania flower or item, you should be able to crouch and right click. It'll select that item. And then for a flower, you're going to want to connect it to a spreader or whatever it's going to be being used for. For generating flowers like this, you're going to want to send it to a spreader. So you'll click the spreader that's nearby. And you see it now is turning on. It's burning up the coal to get mana. And you can see the mana spreader is filling up. Now since it doesn't have anywhere to send it, it's just filling up. 
and we'll talk about and make these sputters in a second. So, kind of ahead of ourselves, but apparently I needed to connect it up so you could see the example. But it'll just keep working. It is inefficient, like I said. And I'm sorry if you hear my, my kids in the background. Um, she, my daughter, my little daughter isn't feeling very well, so please forgive her uh, if she's making noise or not. Uh, so then you're in a mana pool to put the mana into. And these things hold a lot. Uh, you'll need five living stone in this pattern to make the mana pool. And then to get mana to the pool, like we just talked about, you need a mana spreader. It's the only way you can transfer mana from generating flower to a mana pool. Because the flowers connect directly to the spreaders and then the spreaders will send it to the pool. So to make a spreader, any petal will work, a piece of gold, and then six living wood. Which living wood is just living wood um, logs and then split into just living regular living wood like you would planks. So then you'll have that. And then you go ahead and take your wand and you'll connect, same idea, you'll crouch and select the spreader and then you can stay crouched and select your mana pool. And now you see it's sending mana over and filling the pool slowly. Now, one thing the function mode is good for is you'll see here it shows a little symbol below the mana pool that shows an arrow pointing to the pool away from an item. That is saying that any items you drop into this pool um, there are different items in the in the mod, which I'll get into later. But if you drop an item in this pool, if it has mana in it and is able to transfer from that item, it will transfer mana from that item to the pool to help fill it up. But if you crouch and click it with the function mode on, it will change it to you from sending mana from the mana pool into the item. So certain items need filled up with mana, and that's the easiest way to do it. You'll throw it in the pool and make sure it's set up with the arrow pointing towards the object away from the mana pool. Most of the basic components for building your items are gonna be created by throwing normal items, and sometimes some items from Botania, but normal items into a mana pool, just throwing it out. So here, you're gonna take a diamond and throw it into the mana pool, and it'll give you a mana diamond. Which I'll go ahead and demonstrate here in a second. So let me get a diamond. So I take this diamond and I just toss it in there. It gives me a mana diamond. And it's real easy. You can toss a bunch in there. You can automate it with a system with droppers and stuff. Um, really nice. And then you'll take five living rock and a mana diamond and it can be a mana pearl as well in place of this um, you'll just need a ender pearl um, and do the same idea uh, I did this because I figured the earlier game it might be easier to get your hands on diamond than an ender pearl um, but up to you depending on what you have and then to for this is what you're gonna do to make a rune runic altar this is how you're gonna make runes which are essential to higher level crafts of different flowers, generating flowers, etc. Um, you need rooms to be able to do higher level items. So there's the recipe, and do that. Now the altar needs mana to function. You can throw all the ingredients on it, but if it doesn't have mana, it can't function. And the only way to get mana to it is through a mana spreader and the best way to do that so that you have a good reserve is to have one connected to a mana pool. And now you can't connect a mana pool like you do with the flower to the spreader. You can't just click the pool and tell it, okay, there's a spreader nearby, connect to it. No. You have to place the spreader directly against the side. So like right here, this is now connected to this mana pool because it's right next to it. So then, but then the rest of it is pretty much the same. You just <coughs> make sure you're in bind mode. You'll click that spreader that's next to the mana pool, and you'll click it to point at the altar. 
and then it will send mana over to the altar as it's needed from this mana pool as long as it has enough. So then the next item you're going to need is mana steel. Same idea, you're going to take your iron ingots, throw it in a mana pool, and get mana steel. I'm not going to show each of these because it's the same idea, but you just take the item, throw it in like I did earlier, and you'll get that item back, the item you're supposed to get, as long as it's just by itself. Uh, there is an alchemy or a catalyst block later on that we may get into um, that you can put under a mana pool to change other blocks into different blocks. Don't use, make sure you know which one has a catalyst under it because it can start screwing up these recipes if you're not careful. So just keep that in mind. Make sure that you don't have a catalyst block underneath your mana pool if you're trying to do these conversions. Or if you do and you realize something's coming out weird, then that's probably why. Make sure it doesn't have a catalyst under it. Uh, then you'll need mana powder as well, which is just redstone. I believe gunpowder as well will work, but redstone is the easiest. Uh, same idea, just throw it in a mana pool and get mana powder. Alright, so then for that, all this is because <coughs> these are what you'll need to start making your room. So kind of the same idea as the apothecaries. Um, it'll have a recipe and you're going to take that and you're going to throw it. Or you can even, with this, you can't do it with the apothecaries, but with the altar, you can just have the item in your hand and right click on the altar and it'll put it on. You can also right click with an empty hand and take items off. Uh, but you just do that with the correct recipes. So for the rune of fire, which you're going to need for the next flower, which is probably the best in my opinion, at least for our personal ser our um, server that I'm admin on, uh, Instant Valley, all the mods seven. Uh, we have free infinite lava available. So the best flower or best generation for that is a thermal lily. Uh, it eats source, source blocks of lava to generate, and it generates a pretty high amount of mana per consumption. So I would recommend getting into that one, at least to begin with. It's also pretty easy to use um, otherwise. So this is one of the items you're going to need to make a thermal lily. You're going to need rune of fire. You're going to need mana steel ingot, nether brick, nether wart, gunpowder, and mana powder, and then you'll put those all on the altar here. And then of course you'll have um, mana going into, or yeah, mana going into it with a mana spreader. It'll do its thing, and then you'll toss a, once it's done, you'll see little lightning bolts coming off, off of it. Uh, it'll also say that it's ready. Instead of the X over the arrow there that you see, it'll have a check mark. It'll also show a wand and a living rock block. Uh, what that wants you to do is you're going to throw a living rock block, living rock on top of the altar, and then you'll take your wand and you will right click the altar, and it will give you the room. So then, the next thing you're going to want to need to do is you're going to need to make a rune of earth. Same idea. You're going to need a mana steel ingot. You'll need stone, a block of coal, a mushroom, it can be brown or red, and mana powder. Same idea, put them on here, let it finish. You throw your living rock on top of the altar and right click with your wand. And then on to making the actual thermal lily. You, this you will do in the apothecary. You will take a rune of earth, a rune of fire, one red petal, and two orange petals. And throw those in there with this, some wheat seeds, and you'll get your thermal lily. So then, just your thermal lily itself can eat lava, uh, but the best way to use it is it needs lava right next to it, and it will break with fluids hitting it. So to solve that problem, we need to make it into a floating flower, which then becomes a block version instead of a plant version, so it won't break when it gets hit by 
a, a liquid or a fluid. So this is a glimmering flower. It doesn't have to be pink. It can be any flower. You're going to take a regular mystical flower, and you're going to put two glowstone dust in the crafting grid. I don't know that it has to be in this order, but this is the way it's set up by default. Uh, and then you'll get your glimmering pink, your, your glimmering flower. So we'll just take that for now. And then for grass, if you don't know how to get grass, I believe that it is just shears. You take shears and you use them on grass around the area. <coughs> and then you'll take that grass and you'll throw it in a mana pool. And it'll give you a pasture seed. Then you'll take that pasture seed, a block of dirt, and the glimmering flower. Again, doesn't matter what color. And then you'll get a floating flower. With that floating flower, then you'll take it and in the crafting grid along with your thermal lily. Again, any floating flower will work. Then it'll change this thermal lily into a floating thermal lily which is just amazing. So over here is a floating thermal lily. Looks pretty cool and it works just like a block. You can place it anywhere. It doesn't have to be touching the ground. It doesn't have to even be on dirt um, or grass. It works just like a block. So that is really awesome. Alright. So then you could just put it down, put some blocks near it to hold lava and dump a bucket at a time every so often. And it takes, it has a six minute cooldown um, between times that it can eat and then um, transfer new mana. So you want to make sure you don't do it faster than every six minutes. I usually try every seven or eight just to be safe. Because if you feed it lava before it is ready, it will eat it. Or it can eat it. But then it resets its cooldown timer again. And you'll have to wait even longer. And you don't get any benefit for it. So just take that into consideration with this flower. With the thermal lily. That you have to wait at least six minutes. I would advise seven or eight at least. In between intervals of feeding it. Um, so you can continuously get the benefit from it. All right, so then I will show you my setup I like for automating these thermal lilies. Now, again, if you don't have infinite lava, this may or may not be a good option for you. Uh, it'll still work as long as you have a fluid tank or a fluid container that can hold multiple buckets of lava, and you have access to be able to get that. Uh, you can still set it up and use it the same way. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you with the mods that we have on all the mod seven how that I how I use it and keeping in mind that we have infinite free lava this is a perfect way and probably the only way I'd recommend getting mana production um, just because it's easy passive and it doesn't really cost you much other than to build it uh, so first thing it can be any block I like using mana glass it gives off a slight light level it's almost invisible and it's pretty. But you can use regular glass or any non-flammable block. It doesn't have to be glass. Uh, but for mana glass, because you need it for another recipe as well, uh, I'll just go ahead and show you it's glass. Throw it in a mana pool, and you get mana glass, which is just pretty beautiful. Uh, you will want a timer of some sort. Um, an RF, a timer from RF tools will work if it's not banned. Uh, it is banned in our server. So you're able to use the Hovering Hourglass from Botania. It works just like a, our, a timer from RF or whatever. It sends a redstone pulse every so often. You can set that by putting different types of sand in it. Uh, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but I believe that regular sand, and you can put up to a stack into a, any of the hourglasses, um, that regular sand is one second per block of sand. Uh, soul sand is one minute per block. And then you can also use mana powder 
Um, and I believe that is used for if you have a red, a mana pulse sent to an AR glass, and every you can however many mana powder you put in it will then trigger the hourglass to send a redstone signal once it gets X amount of mana pulses. Um, I've never used it that way, but I believe that is the other use for it. Um, so anyway, for this, you just need two mana glass, a mana steel ingot, four gold ingots, and two redstone dust. And you'll get the hovering hourglass. Um, so those are really the only items you'll need. Ignore those. Those are for other things, other videos, hopefully later. Um, so those are the only options you'll need other than what we've already shown to set this up. And then you'll need your different mods. Um, I'll explain. I'm not going to show how to build, but I'll explain the mechanics of the blocks and, I and machines that I use to set this up with what I have here. Um, and then try to you if you have similar blocks or the same blocks in your mod pack, uh, then you should be able to use them. Um, substitute for what that is. Um, so you really only need one section of this. This is an expanded version to ex show um, how expandable this setup is. Uh, I mean, you can build this tower as high as you want. And keep it in this configuration and it'll all work um, only issue is, is the higher you build you'll need to make sure you put your mana pools higher because the mana spreader is going to reach so far um, and you'll want them right next to your flowers it's easiest you won't run into each other um, the other thing I have here is on this side I have two flowers going into one mana pool on each side if you want to have more mana pools or you can even have four of them, one off each, but they just fill up slower. Or if you will need maximum benefit of a lot of mana right away, you can aim all of them into just one mana pool. So on this side, I have all four going into one. All right, so on to the build. Um, you'll need building blocks. Again, doesn't have to be concrete. I like the aesthetic of it, but it doesn't have to be concrete. It can be any stone block or redstone transmittable block. Um, you'll need two of those. Just place them down. Uh, yeah, you just saw the move. Hourglass fire off there, through there. And it just fed lava in to there, to the thermal alley. Um, so you'll have those two blocks. You'll place a redstone down on those last block here and you'll put your hourglass on right behind it uh, then you will take six so or seven soul sand or eight soul sand um, like I said because each one is one minute and you need you want to make sure you have at least a seven minute buffer in between feeding lava to the thermal release so it doesn't reset the timer and mess you up so you'll want seven or eight or even more depending on what you want, but at least seven or eight uh, soul sand. And then you'll just, right now I have seven. To add it, all you do is hold it and right click on the hourglass with it in your hand and it'll put it in there. Now, if you have a whole stack, it will take the whole stack. So make sure you have it split up before you try to put it in your hourglass, unless you want it to be an hour long plus. <laughs> Uh, then you I use right now in this pack. I use fluid placers from industrial foregoing. I know that um, packs like D direwolf 20 uh, Have cyclic which has a fluid placer as well. I'm not sure what other mods have fluid placers um, But between industrial foregoing or cyclic you should have one of them um, They work very well for being able to be set up to run on a pulse which works great with this so that they don't put out lava except when you want it to um, so I use two of those facing away from blocks this last block here and then I'll put some kind of non flammable block here like I said I use mana glass here because I like to be able to see through it I think it looks cool um, but you can use any non flammable block there 
um, and make sure whatever block is underneath of it as well is not flammable. Uh, and then you'll just put, place it there. And on either side, you'll make sure that you have some sort of fluid pipe. <coughs> I'm using mechanical pipes from Mechanism. Right, so you don't want to use any fluid pipe. Um, I'm using mechanical pipes from Mechanism here. Um, as well as you will want some sort of power cable. Again, I'm using mechanism. If you need, if you're building it in a tower like this, this is the setup you'll want. You'll want to put your power cables in the middle here and route them through so that they route around. And then you can just take up off the center and so on. Um, and then your pipes, you're going to want to go in from the sides again. So you can just hook into your tank or your ender tank or whatever it is on your server that you're using. Um, to hook into these fluid placers along with the power. And then once they're hooked up, either like this or a different way, um, if you're using just one setup here, um, next thing you wanna do before they start throwing lava out is you're gonna wanna make sure you put a thermal lily right in front of where the lava is gonna come out. So one block away from the placer it will stop the lava from flowing everywhere and it will eat the lava. It also, if the lava is not able to be eaten because either this is full, the mana pool is full or whatever, it won't flow anywhere. It'll just stay there until it's ready to be eaten. Um, and then you'll place your mana spreader right next to it or very close to it. It doesn't have to be right next to it. You can have a little range to connect your thermal, your flower to your spreader, but I like them real close. And then somewhere nearby, again, remember there is a distance limit with spreaders. Um, then you'll want a mana pool so that you can aim them into it. Whether you do two or one into each, or all of them into e all of them into each, uh, it's up to you. But this is the expandable version of a mana generation tower that I've come up with. Uh, I'm sure someone else has come up with it before me. Um, this is kind of what I came up with trial and error though. Um, so I feel like it's somewhat my own design, but I don't want to take away from anyone else. Um, I'm just not aware of somebody right now that does this specific design. I hope you enjoy, learn something, and I will be back with a different episode, hopefully either on Applied Energistics or on Botania to explore some further nuances into these mods. Enjoy, have fun, and thank you for watching. Bye.